Luke chapter 5, Luke chapter 5, let's go into our series, we're continuing this series on partnership for greater performance, partnership for greater performance, amen, partnership for greater performance, Luke chapter 5, Luke chapter 5, and let's see if we can work the PowerPoint, Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5 and I'm telling you now if you want to have a good church I'm Tuesday evening all right don't look to come up in here unless the Lord say something different don't look to come in here on Tuesday on Sunday and just to have a good shout this is an opportunity where I have to talk to the to living waters partners this is when all of y'all out or at least most of all of you and so I'm going to take advantage of this opportunity to empower you, to give you what you need so that you can walk in victory in every area of your life. On yesterday, we had a powerful session with our men, thanks to our director who made that possible. We did a Zoom session with men as far as Inagua, Freeport. Men don't miss that one hour of power only one Saturday morning in the month. But we had an awesome time yesterday and we talked a little bit about, um, what, what was our theme yesterday? We talked about um, progressive success. How do you experience continual success? Where you go from glory to glory in your life, where you continue to bear fruit in every area of your life and a whole lot of churches and evangelical pastors will challenge us to to lead you to Christ oh we need to preach more about Jesus well when you don't accept Christ you need to know how to live for Christ so our responsibility is to teach you how to live for Christ but also to help you to get all of the wonderful benefits that you and I receive as a result of us accepting Christ all right so once you accept Christ how do I walk in the blessings of God how do I manifest the fruits of God's blessing in my life that's what you come to church for it's in the house of God where you receive the principles of the Word of God so that you can experience continual fruitfulness continual blessings continual success it is God's will that you have a successful joining so don't settle for just coming to church and having an emotional moment where you just had a good shout, a good dance, and that's it. And you live a defeated life Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and you come back for another fix on Sunday, and you go through the same failure and defeat Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, come back Sunday again, give me another injection let me feel good, prophesy over me, and then you go through the same routine again. Failure, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. When it's the will of God for you to come to the house of God, get empowered, and see success, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Give me another injection. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Give me another injection. My house experiencing prosperity. My children experiencing success. My marriage, uh, my finances, my health every day of my life that's the will of God for you it works on my nerve and I believe it grieves Holy Spirit as well to see some of us who have been in church for years in the same place praying on the same level come on y'all no success in your life no increase in your life no fruitfulness in your life just a church experience you shouldn't want just that for your life you should want a little more and that's my assignment is to make sure you get a little more that's all right please go and share on our Facebook page go ahead quickly do that quickly and you on YouTube go ahead and share the link let's take it straight up to a hundred today Luke chapter 5 reading from the first verse uh, evangelist Todd did an exceptional job this morning in calling the service to order and he went right into this so it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake, 
But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. They gave up Jason. Well, they did their time anyhow. Didn't get what they went out for. They're now, that day they're washing their nets, getting ready to um, probably go home and rest up for the rest of the day until the following night. And they're washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats. I told you, get Jesus in your business. Get Jesus in your life. Which was Simon's and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitude from where? Out of the boat. And when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep, let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and to help them. So they had fishermen. They had partners in their business. They didn't just call to, for anyone. They called for their partners. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. Partnership for greater performance. We gave you the definition of partnership and we said to you that partnership is either of a pair of people engaged together in the same activity. We said a partnership is a formal agreement by two or more parties to manage and operate a business and share its profits. Partnership is an agreement where parties known as partners agree to cooperate to advance their mutual interests. We said to you that the Greek word for partnership is to share or to participate in. It signifies a deep relationship of mutual love and support. And we said that partnership is a core theme found throughout the pages of the Bible. The concept is introduced as early as the creation narratives. And thread throughout both the Old and the New Testament. We see how God was in partnership with the leaders, the, the, uh, the kings. And God was in partnership with the prophets. He was in partnership with Israel. And so we see it in the Old Testament. Then we see it again in the New Testament. Jesus came and he uh, called apostles who would partner with him to fulfill his mandate. To establish God's kingdom in the earth. We said it's important, its importance is underscored again and again. Shedding light on the role of partnership in accomplishing God's will and expressing divine qualities of love, cooperation, empathy, and mutual support. All right? And we talked to you about the different partnership that's mentioned in Scripture. But the foundation of all of them is Christ. Once you and I have God as the helm, God leading our lives, all of the other partnership, whether it's marital, whether it's business, whether it's church, pastor and church, once we put God first, all and working the principle of the kingdom, all other partnership will be genuine and experience continual success seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things will be added once we put God first your marriage will be healthy you put God first and relates to your finances your finances will be healthy you put God faith first in in business in partnership in business your, 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 your business will be successful. And the Bible said they made sure, gave Jesus what he asked for, and that was his boat. When Jesus got in the boat, things changed for them. Let me say that one more time. When Jesus got in the boat, things changed for them. So they were toiling all night, they caught nothing. 
And now morning come, they're washing their nets, getting ready to pack up for the day, and that would be it. Jesus comes and he said, lend me your boat. They gave Jesus their boat. Jesus gets on the boat, used their boat, and their whole life changed because naturally they will catch fish at night, not at day. Jesus comes and in the day caused them to experience a net breaking blessing. God don't need everything to be right in your life to bless your life. God don't need you dotting the I's and crossing the T's. All he needs to do is get in your boat. All God needs is your vulnerability and your willingness to get him in the boat and your life will change for the better. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, Dimitri, will be added to you. Your problem is your priorities are not lined up. So you seek a woman without God. You seek a man without getting instructions from the word of God. And you expect for your life to be full of peace and prosperity. It's not going to happen. You need God in your life. You need God in your life. You need Christ in your life. You need Holy Spirit in your life. So that whilst you're prospering with the gift he gives you, you can have peace. Get them on your boat. So we talk about the different types of partnership that's mentioned in scripture. Then we talk about a few things that you and I need to know before we go into partnership. We talked about that. Go back on our Facebook page or our YouTube channel and just watch it again so you can get it. And then we talked about... uh, The benefits of partnership. We said where there is genuine partnership, some things happen. Who ready to get some big bucks? All right, so the first person, my God, she done up. But she probably don't even work. She just, she just wait for this moment and and let me get, I got to go up, I got to go up on my thing for you, sweetie. I got to go up. Now, all right, all right. So give me a few things. Where we say where there is genuine partnership, a few things happen quickly. There are shared responsibilities. The problem with a whole lot of you, you're going into partnership where you're giving all and the person is giving nothing. There must be shared responsibility. All right, you work, I don't work. You work, I clean the house. Shared responsibility. All right? Shared responsibility. You bring your portion, I bring my portion. Shared responsibility. That's why it's important for you to know what they bring and what you bring to the partnership so you can know what to expect from them. Shared responsibility. What's the next one? Isolation will be avoided. Now I say this to y'all. Whenever you hear people talk but they don't, they ain't into people like that, they're owners. That's because of ignorance or offense. But God never intend for man to be alone. And if you're going to do great things in the earth, you cannot do it by yourself. That's why it's important for you to be healed from ignorance and offense. I tell this to leaders all the time. Stop making that statement, but it's lonely at the top. You will see in a bit. You're not lonely at the top. It's lonely because you didn't take nobody with you. There should always be somebody in your space who, glory to God, who can be there to encourage you or you encourage them. Lonely at the top. Take somebody with you even if it's only your wife or your spouse or one of your children. Take somebody with you to the top. Isolation is avoided. What's the next one? You will be insulated. Insulated. The reason why some of you are, all of the gift and the talent you have, you're not experiencing all that God destined you, you to have, is because of the people that's in your space who you're expecting to give what they're not able to give you. 
I could always tell people who ain't going nowhere. They just hang around a bunch of crazy people. Not because you, you educated means you got wisdom. And wisdom is the principal thing, not your education. Wisdom help you to pick the right people that you need in your space to insulate you for the destiny God have for you. Insulation. What's the next one? There will be no division. There will be no division. All right? There will be no division. Where there's genuine partnership, there's no, we're going to disagree, but we're going to still stay connected. What's the next one? The toil of leadership will be produced. That's why brothers, you who are single, have to choose the right woman. Because she helps you with the leadership. The reason why I got to have the right people around me in, le- in church and in my leadership is because they help to relieve the pressure. What's the next one? You will be able to, la- to launch further in the deep. Curl, you ain't playing, buddy. You must see. <laughs> I was I just hoping you was missing on something. You could just miss, just miss on one. Give me the next one. You will catch more fish. One can chase a thousand, two can put ten thousand to flight. So we can do more. When we have more in our space. More people connected to us. Glory to God bringing their gifts and their talents to us. We can do more. We can do more. We can do more. If all of y'all give all, we can do more in this church. Listen to me. If the people you hired, Nixon, who you paying, give their all on your job, you can do more. And you will get more doors will open for you. Because the more you give, the more you accomplish, the greater your influence. The greater your influence, the greater the need is for you. The greater the need, the greater the opportunities. Well done. That's the quickest 50 you'll make in. And it could have been quicker if I didn't talk so much. People say, why you just do that? I do that to help you. Why you just do that, man? People don't do that in church. Why just do it to help you? She'll never forget that. She'll never forget those six principles. Never. They done program. She was meditating on them all night. She doesn't know once apostle get here. She doesn't know how he operates. Once she get there, she get up quick. She, all her hands would lift her. She was up. <laughs> Lifting her hands with the mind. have to figure out who to call. No, 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 no. She up. Right here. And pervade him. And the audit was given. Now she got lunch money for at least two days. A few things that ends good genuine partnership. A few things that end good, genuine partnership. Let's, let's establish this. There are some people you ain't supposed to be connected to. Straight up. And then you have all the signs before you give them everything. You, have, you already have all the signs. And you still just go all in. You will see the hand writing on the wall. You don't know he crazy. He don't show you he crazy. You don't hear he talking crazy. You don't see how he acting crazy. You don't see she nasty. You don't hear how she talking she ain't into nothing. But yet you go all in. There's some people you ain't supposed to connect to. Straight up. So how, how do you and I destroy good partnership? How do we lose genuine people? People who should be in our space. Who you know should be in your life. The man of God that you know you need to be under. The woman of God that you know you need to be connected to. How do you lose that? 
How do you lose good, genuine friendship? One bump that, that hit the road, one bump you hit in the relationship, one little disagreement, you all just separate. One person pick up an offense and you all mad for the rest of your life. Well, if both of you to stay connected, cross the bump together, both of you could have been doing some major things together. You ain't got to say nothing, I'm, I'm talking to you. So you leave the woman, and now you watch another fella just enjoying her. You get rid of the fella, and another woman enjoying him. What is it that she saw in him that you didn't see? Because it, the, whatever he is doing in the other relationship, he could have done with you. Whatever she is bringing to the other relationship, she could have brought to you. Whatever he or she is doing in the other organization, they could have brought it to you. What is it that you did or what happened to cause y'all to lose it? What happened? If the relationship, if the partnership was purposeful, well, how you was able to destroy it? There's some people who left me or who I disconnect myself from. Look back and say, you, you could have fixed that. Could have dealt with that. You didn't fight for it. And you're not, you're not deserving to have anything you don't prepare, prepare to fight for. And, and, and some of you prepared to fight, but the fellow ain't prepared to fight. Some of you prepared to fight, and the woman ain't prepared to fight. And, and if you don't have a reason to fight, you will not fight. And there's some people who just want you out of their space. You're going to see why in a bit. They ain't going to fight for you because they want you out of their life. And then you're trying to go behind these people who really don't want you in their space. You fighting to keep them and they fighting to get rid of you. Oh, I'm going to help you in Jesus name. Okay, so so um let's look at this. A few things that ends good partnership. Give me a little more monitors, please. A few things that end good partnership. The first thing is seasons. 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 Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 said, To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under the heaven. To everything... To everything, to everything, to everything, to everything, there's a season. As long as the earth remains, the Bible said there will be what? Seed, time, and harvest. To everything, there's a season. You're going to come into or you're going to come out of. To everything, there's a season. You're going to have storms and you're going to have good days. To everything, there's a season. That house that you have and you treasure and it's the finest thing in the community now in the next few months something else coming up and i'll outdo your beauty to everything there's a season i know you got that good shape but just go have two children to everything there's a season keep living just keep living keep living to everything there's a season that's why it's important for you to enjoy the good seasons Prepare yourself in the good seasons because bad seasons coming. And like a, wise, like a wise aunt, they save up for those seasons mm -hmm. to everything there's a season. I know he's fine, but he could get old, buddy. To everything there's a season. To everything, to everything. That little spooky, 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 spooky. To everything. That's why you got to train them up now. 
Because don't think for one minute you got that child just like a little toy. You got your grandchildren just like a little toy. Instead of you empower them now, speak into them now, train them now, glory to discipline them now, glory to God. If you don't do it, they're going to grow up to everything there's a season. And can I say this to you? Children and humans are weapons. Let me say that one more time. Children and humans are weapons. He said as an arrow in the hands of a mighty warrior. Children's, children and humans are weapons. That's why he said train them up in the way that they should go. And when they are old they will not depart from it. What you experiencing in your children's behavior is because of what you did, did not instill in them when they were children. She disrespecting you because you let her or him disrespect you when she was a child. You didn't slap them in their mouth. You didn't, you didn't slap them. You didn't slap them. Because that's your friend. Friend. Joshua know. You can go to far with daddy. They know. Daddy look a funny way. Don't everybody shift that tone. They knew that from a child. I'm 56 and I know how far to go with my ma. <laughs> Mommy said, boy, shut up. I'll slap you in my mouth. I said, I'm 56. I'll still slap you in your mouth. Who are you talking to like that? But some of you, and let me help you all grandparents, whilst I'm on this, let me tell you all something. Be careful that because you didn't do what you felt you should have done for your children, you feel you have to do it for your grandchildren. They are not your children. They are your grandchildren. Let your children bring up their children. Bring them up. You going to go and party in and leave me because I feel like I do what I should have done for you. When you go and party and you better get somebody to take care of your child. You ain't going on clubbing and I'm taking care of your child. The devil and his ma is a liar. Preach well. Stop that foolishness. Stop that. Stop it. I must keep your child. Girl, you better come find a tent. Oh, no. They're weapons. Seasons. Seasons when they're babies, but they're going to grow up. To everything, there's a season. Sometimes the seasons end in the partnership. And separation is good for a season. Separation is good sometimes for a season. So there will be someone in your life on this level. But they may not be with you on this level. That's why you should be more purpose driven than personal driven. Purpose driven than people driven. Because there's a person in, in partnership who might just be with you here. They may be with you here, but they have to drop off here. And you got to keep going. Right. Now what you, may, what, you, what you need to know is, sometimes they are here for a season. And they may drop off here in this season. But y'all might reconnect up here. That's why you got to handle people right. Because in the process, y'all might separate here, but y'all might reconnect here. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So Abraham and Lot separated for a season. Lot goes into, into Sodom, glory to God, hallelujah, after the separation, years later, the Bible didn't give the land a time when they were separated, but he goes into, into Sodom and Gomorrah, and watch this, y'all, God came to Abraham to intercede for Lot. 
So they were separated for a season. Trouble hit his life. And he had to go back to the one who he was separated for in, in time, in time, in season. Sometimes God will take you out just to bring you back in. He took Moses out for a season and he takes Moses back and he said, now tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Because sometimes God will separate you for a season. That's why you have to ask God every day of your life to create in you a clean heart, renew the right spirit within you and be open in case God want to reconnect you. Seasons. 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 Look at this other one. What separate or cause good relationships, good partnership, immaturity. Immaturity. <clears throat> Can I say this to you all who won't get married? Marriage is not for children. You're going, to grow through, you're going to grow together, but at least be mature before you get connected. Right. Know what you Let me come from you. <laughs> know what you want before you get married. <laughs> know what you have in you before you get married. Know what the person have in them before you get married. Know what they want before you get married. Come on, somebody. Know why you're connecting before you connect. Glory to God. So that when you go through the process, go through seasons of change because of maturity, you can stand. Oh, boy, Wells, you're talking today. You, you know something, darling? And I want us to grow from this. I just get more love offering when I say, shake your neighbor. Shake them and rock them. Tell your neighbor, God is going to turn it around. Glory to God. You all just give more when I got you all falling out and thing and dribbling and crying and holding you weave. This is the time you ought to give. This is impartation. I just say, I just say, and I ain't asking for nothing. I just say it. In maturity. Watch what Paul says here. This is so good. Watch what Paul says. Paul says, when I was a child, I talked like a child. I, what? I thought. You mean you can talk and think like a child? Then he says, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, full grown, mature, I put the ways of childhood behind me. You can separate yourself from childish behaviors. Well, apostle, you know the Bible said, unless you become as a little child. No, no, no. What he means is don't be childish and stupid. He is saying be dependent. Be humble. Children are dependent. Children depend on their parents. So he said, become as a little child, but you depend on me. And that didn't mean you go, you, go, you go get married and you're thinking like a child and acting like a child and reasoning like a child. That didn't mean you go into business thinking like a child, talking like a child, reasoning like a child. Well, what a time. Immaturity will cause good, genuine partnership. Immaturity. Immaturity. You're all separated because both of you was childish. You know what, things, you know what, you know what foolishness my wife and I do because both of us were thinking, talking, 
and reasoning like children? You know how much, much we lost? You know how much time we wasted? Because we were talking, thinking, and reasoning like a child. Nothing hurt marriages like when one party is more mature than the other. You way up here in your thinking, way up in here in your reasoning, way up here in your talking, and they still thinking and talking and reasoning like a child. You on this level and they down here. You cannot force growth in anybody. Growth must be voluntary. I come in right down here and talk to y'all in this room. You can't force nobody to grow. Why are you talking? You can't force nobody to grow. Fuss them, row them, cuss them, whatever. You cannot force growth in anybody. You don't have the power to change nobody's mindset. You cannot make someone think successful. Why are you acting like this? You cannot change that. And, 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 and you see, some of you got, to, you got to mind your own business. You got to work on your own soul salvation. Stop trying to change people. Stop making statements like this. They think I stupid. You care what they think? You think I care what you think? She must think I'm stupid. She must think I'm fool. And you handle me like this. And I, no, 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 no. You can't. If that's what they're thinking, that's what they're thinking. You cannot think they think that way because you feel stupid. Because, <laughs> is that too much? Because <laughs> you feel stupid. You're getting, you letting them get in your thoughts. So you making statements like that. They think I fool. They think I stupid. They, they, da, 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 da. No, no, no. You don't try to think for me. Because if you think I stupid, I really don't care about what you think. Your thoughts becomes your thoughts. And if you keep thinking the way you're thinking, then your thoughts will cause you to produce actions and behaviors. And I'm not going to think like you. So I want to buy myself something, and I'm, I don't want to buy it because I think you're going to think I, th I teach the church money. You think I care? Don't do that because you know they're going to think you this. You think you're no, 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 no. You don't care what they think. If you want to buy it, you buy it. If you work for, for what you work for, wear what you want to wear, live what you want to live, and let them think what they want to think. But you don't stay down here because you think... They think you shouldn't deserve what you got. Y'all don't even like how I talk to y'all today. Separation. Child, I left because, you know, they, they, think you, they think you ain't got nothing in you. No, they ain't messed with you yet because they ain't seen nothing yet. And sometimes you don't deserve a platform because you ain't ready to live in the platform that you're living on. And come on now, so why should I give you what I work hard for and just give it to you, just hand it to you because you think you should have it? Like, you know, you know, people, people, people make statements like this. Uh, all that money she get. You mean she couldn't give me something? All, all the money they have, they can't give you something. They can't buy this for you. They couldn't pay for this. They couldn't pay for that. All, that's my money. How you get in my pocket? That's my money. I know that man. Get continue with the point. <laughs> Think I crazy. I know exactly what I mean. But <laughs> Hebrews five and five. <laughs> the children is mine. 
Hebrews 5 and 14 says, and then you write there an agreement with him. I hear you. <laughs> Hebrews 5. <laughs> I hope you got a dog so you can sleep in. Hebrews 5 and 14. But solid food is for the mature. Who by constant use having trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Mature minded people are able to distinguish good from evil. Able to reason. And watch, and watch mature spirituality. The Bible said we who are spiritual judge it all things. We are not judged by no man. You know why? Because we can, we can look within ourselves and see we are stupid. Mature people. M mature people will talk to themselves and say, you know, I shouldn't have said it like that. I shouldn't have done it like that. You need to go back and apologize. That's how spiritual mature people handle themselves. That's why he said we need not to be judged by any man because we judge all things. We're able to design what is good from evil. We're able to look within ourselves and see that we're acting crazy. Yeah. Hmm. Let's look at the science of an immature person. Let's look at some signs, some signs. Paul say, I, when I was a child, I talk, think, act, or reason. When I became full grown or mature, I put away childish behaviors. In maturity, low, hurt, hurt, good partnership in maturity watch this immature people run from conflict they don't deal with conflict they run from it financial conflict they run it Build conflict, they run in. Warfare, they run in. Having to address and deal with issues, they're going to run from it. Immature people don't deal with conflict. Immature people are unstable people. Unstable. Unstable. You remember what Paul mentioned in Ephesians 4? Five-fold ministry is for the perfecting of the saint, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come into the unity of the faith, into the knowledge of the Son of God, that we be no longer children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine. I didn't write that. Paul wrote that. They are unstable. They are unstable. You, can't, you cannot trust a child to show up and be consistent. Boy, Wells. You can't trust them. Don't give children heavy responsibility. If you know somebody can't handle it, don't give it to them. Amen. You're expecting so much from, we're going to talk about that in a bit, so much from people who don't have the capacity or the ability to give it to you because they are not to that level yet of maturity. And you're beating yourself up and frustrating yourself. And not because he's 40 means he's matured. Not because he is 60 means he matured. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. Why are you in and out relationships? Why are you in and out church? Why you show up on Sunday, you're ready to perform next week because somebody get you mad, you stop. You're in and out. You're unstable. We can't trust you. 
And you go into business with unstable people. There's no financial consistency. They, they, their integrity is, 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 is shady. Their character is broken. You cannot trust them. We're going to get there in a bit. Unstable. 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 You get them mad. Unstable, boy. They're unstable. Unstable when she kind of them and think was growing up and things like that. If your mommy get them mad, they come to me. I get them mad, they go back to their ma. And you play that game with them all day. Fuss them. That, 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 they go back to the ma. The ma realize, fuss them, they come back to that. If you can play that game with them all day, they don't even realize they're getting gamed. <laughs> Unstable. The Bible said a double-minded man is unstable in all its ways. When you are able to reason, when you are able to make right decisions, when your mind is stable, glory to God, you will not be in and out relationships up today, down tomorrow. A double-minded man is unstable in not some all of his ways. What do you mean you gonna, you gonna have a child for some a, 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 ch a child? You gonna have a child for a child, and you think he gonna get up in the morning and go to work for a child? He's a child. He don't know responsibility. You marry a child, you think he gonna he gonna pay any mortgage, pay any bill? He won't play games. He won't go to the club. He won't hang out. She won't hang out. She won't have baby and give the baby to you. She's a child. She won't play with that baby as long as that baby is, is looking like a doll baby. So they up and down pushing their trolley, up and down pushing their trolley. People say, spook them. She is so spooky, 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 spooky. Oh, she is so pretty. And they love that. And they love that. And that's all they want. They ain't going to get up to go to work. They're going to gamble out their money. They ain't going to be committed to buying nothing for the child. You buy the clothes. They dress the child up. They go in the mall push because somebody can say look at this little doll baby spucky spucky so the fella will get dressed up he'll get dressed up and come to christen the baby and you buy the clothes you buy the clothes you pay for the christening pictures you pay for the food after and he just look good on the picture and that's all you want you got a boy on your hand got a boy you got a boy since we're doing it you got a boy and then you got all these uh 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 uh, uh dress up uh godmother and godfather and trouble hits your life and they can't find a dime to help you because you got a bunch of boys you want the picture look good and all you a bunch of boys no 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 cut that okay do you help them when you counsel them but don't that's why the devil don't want you come to this church i find you unstable in all their ways And mature people will hold on to hurt. I've forgiven him. And hold on to that boy. You know what she did to me? You know what he did to me? They hold on to that. You're trying to go on in the relationship and they still remind you of something that happened 10 years ago. You know what you did to me? 10 years ago. Immature can see that they hurt too. You hurt people too. You're not the only one God hurt. And you're not the only one that don't hurt people. What makes you so special? 
You're the only one don't hurt people. You're the only one don't do things to offend people. Ask your mommy, your daddy, your sister, your brother, and your children. So I've learned something throughout the years and growing that I have to learn how to lose people who hurt me if people are going to lose me who I hurt. That takes maturity. Okay, we can't finish this. 1120, we ain't going to try to finish this. I ain't going to let you all do that to me. I can take my time. I think I ask all of you all want me to continue because I ain't going to continue. No. Free up. You'll pay for that. Now I can finish these points now. You're going to remember that. But I'm going to, I can let you all see the next point. And I ain't doing this Tuesday night either. We're going to shout Tuesday night. Lacks patience and warns profits overnight. Childish people want it right now. They want the marriage to be right, right now. They want things to work out right now. They want to let us get the house right now. Let's get right children right now. Children. We ain't reach yet. Mommy, we ain't reach yet. Child, the ride is eight hours. Go to sleep. Everywhere stop. We ain't reach yet. That's children. Just start the business and want money, want profit. Just start. You ain't start the business good yet, and you 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 shopping or the little couple dollars what you supposed to be putting back into the business. You're shopping on it, and you wonder why you're going bankrupt. You don't even mean bankrupt because you ain't got no money in the bank. You just going up. <laughs> just up. <laughs> you go bankrupt when you got money in the bank, man. <laughs> Lack patience. Lack patience. Lack patience. My wife and I had to wait for five years. The first child, then another five, four for the next child. Patience. That's what hurt Abram. That's what hurt Abram, man. Couldn't wait. His wife come to him and tell him, uh, go to the maid. That's all he wants. Yes, sir. <laughs> you ain't gonna tell me that twice. <laughs> I've been watching a little while. <laughs> huh? No, no, you no no no. A mature man would say, What you saying? You talking like a foolish woman. If you can wait, I can wait. Even though I think him about that, you ain't gonna know. If the fella just say, yeah, okay, no problem. What night? You've been thinking about that, buddy. Patience. You want out? Let's go. Patience. Every marriage, every business, every ministry, everything go through a season. You will have ups, da, up, down, up days, down days. And, 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 and the, the, the level of your maturity is based on how you de- hand, handle these down days. If that fella ready to run, as soon as y'all going through a storm, you, you, you know exactly where he's at. If she just ready to give in and walk away because y'all hit a bump in the road, you know exactly where she's at in her mind. She cannot handle pressure. She's not mature enough yet to handle it. You're expecting too much from somebody that have, don't have the ability to give it because they have not grown to that place yet. And mature people don't know how to reason. Or fight all day. You wonder what wrong with he had. You mean tell me he can't understand the simple words coming out of my mouth? 
can't reason this thing out? And then you go to work and people are able to reason things out and you come home and you wonder what's going on with this house? We're able to bring our heads together and do this on the job, but we can't bring our head together to do this for the family? You can be so faithful on the job, but not faithful in the kingdom of God? You can do so much for the world. You don't, you don't care what they call you. But as soon as the pastor says something to hurt your feelings, you're ready to go back. We don't reason. We don't try to talk things through. Be ready to walk away. I leave in that church. I leave in this. I'm walking away from this. This is a generation who just put it in the microwave. Give me this quick, fast, and I can get about it here. No reason. No reason. I tell my wife, I said, let me tell you something, buddy. If I go, if I pull up and fellas them have the road block up, I go wait till they're ready to move. Or I'll turn around and go to the next corner. Because these this generation don't know how to reason. No reason, not me. I'm gonna go around them in a nice way. If they cussing and carrying on, I can say, God bless your heart, and I keep on going. <laughs> I got something to live for, buddy. I got something to live for. I got something to live for. They don't know how to reason. You ain't gonna kill me.